Hey, it's Veronica from Gardenstead. I have a really amazing soaking method to rehydrate orchids that I want to share with you. Maybe your orchid isn't looking too good, its leaves might be looking floppy or leathery like this one here. I used this method on my Phalaenopsis orchid, Alba. About a year ago, she was really, really dehydrated, near death, and since then she's put out a bunch of new leaves, really perky, and there's a bloom stem. So uh, this method is amazing. It's super easy to execute. It's really clear. I know it can be really hard to figure out whether you're giving your orchid enough water or too little. That's also why I'm transitioning my orchid into living in a semi-hydroponic or hydroponic situation. I'll mention a little bit about that as well. Uh, because that way it's really, I find, very simple to keep your orchid happy and there's fewer questions of whether you're doing things right. So this turned into a kind of super long video, so I want to give you really quick instructions on how to do this in the process. One, take your orchid out of the potting medium, whether it's bark or moss or whatever, get all that off the roots. Two, rinse your orchid's roots in room temperature cool water. Uh, gently take off any extra medium that might be clinging onto the roots and inspect the roots to check out which ones are dead and which ones are alive. Unhealthy and dead roots that are decaying are leathery, they're brown, they're mushy, cut those off. Make sure your scissors stay clean with alcohol. Okay, next step. If you have a bloom stem, if it's dead, cut it down. If it's alive, you might want to cut it down if your orchid is really, really struggling. It doesn't have many leaves, it doesn't have many roots, and it looks like it's gonna die. Cut out that bloom stem. If your orchid is pretty okay and you're just giving it a nice spa treatment with a soaking method, then leave the bloom stem on. Next. Get a black tea bag, put water into the, a clean orchid pot. The water should be distilled or filtered, something that doesn't have fluoride, chlorine, all that jazz. Um, if you want to use a black tea bag, you steep it in that water for five to 10 minutes. Pop your orchid in, get it nice and supported. The crown or top of the orchid here should be out of the water, just have roots in the water. Let it soak for the daytime. At night, take your orchid out, put it in a different container that is dry, let it dry out overnight. In the morning, fresh water, repeat. That's a super quick rundown of the instructions. If you want to follow along with me while I take care of this orchid and go through all the steps, there's gonna be some more details for you there. Please continue watching if you're interested in that. Let's start by taking this out of its pot and emptying out the medium. Try to be gentle here. You might find that some of the bark is stuck to the roots, so get what you can as much as possible at first. And if anything is stuck on, we can give it a bit of a rinse and that helps the orchid let go. So this orchid has uh, never been repotted and what I'm uncovering here is a moss core right here that the orchid originated in and that is now at this point decaying and condensing and suffocating roots so it's really important to repot the orchid once in a while when the medium that it's in has lived its life. I also see a bark with a little bit of mold on it. This orchid is going to be so happy after we get it fixed up. At this point, I've done what I can to just loosely remove the bark, and now I'm going to rinse it so that all of the bark that the roots are still clinging onto will come off a bit easier. Okay, so I'm done with the rinse. I've removed most of the bark. Some of it is really stupidly still clinging on. I'm not too worried about that because with the soaking method, it will eventually come off and there's really not much left. It's important when you're rinsing out the roots to use room temperature or a bit colder water. Warm water will shock the roots and just be really gentle, don't be ripping things off. All right, next thing is to examine the roots. Are they alive? Are they dead? What rinsing does is it brings that into a really clear picture. So once you rinse the roots, the alive ones will turn a nice bright green color or if it's alive but not super happy, it might look like a pale green color. This is very firm right now, so it is an alive root. I'm going to leave it. Here you can see a dead root 
in here as well. They'll either be brown, mushy, uh, wrinkled. That, those are all indications that the root should be removed. It's just decaying at this point and shouldn't be kept around the rest of the roots. As well, this orchid has a dead bloom stem. I'm going to cut that off and cut at the uh, second node so that right here, you can see that, this is the node, cut right above it. That way, if there's any infection, it won't travel down into the rest of the plant. It will stop at that node. If your orchid has a bloom stem that's alive right now, you can leave it on. I'd say that if your orchid is near death, like mine was, cut it off because you want the orchid to be putting its energy into the roots and the leaves to keep itself alive rather than into flowers. Orchids will literally flower while they're dying. I'm going to clean off my surface, clean out this because this is where the soaking method will happen. If you don't have an orchid pot that's glazed, say terracotta, try to find something that uh, won't have moisture permeability. So something-ish in the shape that will support the orchid and retain moisture. Feels a little like a game of operation. Okay, finding all of the brown, mushy, and not so good looking roots and snipping them off. So I still have some brown roots here and you may encounter this too. There's this pretty rotted section near the top and then actually there's green roots further down. I don't have very strict advice for you, but in this circumstance, you could choose to cut it off or you could choose to leave it. Uh, why I would leave it is if your orchid doesn't have a lot of roots. This one has a lot, so I'm just going to cut this off because it doesn't really need this in my opinion and there is a fairly significant amount of rot. Next step is creating your water bath. And this is where the black tea bag comes in. So this is just a regular orange pico tea. I'm gonna pop it in here and put in some filtered or distilled room temperature water. I'm not filling up all the way because when we put this orchid in, this um, kind of body or crown chunk of the orchid, we want room for that to be out of water the entire time. So my water level is up to about here, and I'm just going to let this steep for about five to 10 minutes. Okay, so why steep your orchid in black tea? The idea here is that the black tea is slightly acidic, which orchids really like, and it has some nitrogen, so it's a little bit of a fertilizer. Overall, it encourages the orchid to grow new roots, which is what we want in this method. We want lots and lots of new roots. Whether this is entirely accurate, I'm not sure, but I did try this with my own orchid and I used this black tea in the on-off soaking method for a couple weeks and it definitely didn't harm the orchid and I think it probably helped. So that's why it's optional. Uh, do it if you have black tea around and you wanna try it out or don't, this method will still work. I'd also like to mention that it can be good to let your orchid dry out for about a day uh, after you trim off roots, that lets the wounds heal up and it's better to not soak it directly in water afterwards. But I'd say if your orchid is really, really dehydrated, you can go ahead and put it into this soaking solution and it should be fine. What you'll do with your orchid from now on is in the day, you're going to soak it in water. When it comes around to nighttime, take your orchid out Place it into another pot, maybe something like this, and let it dry out completely. Then repeat every day. What you want to make sure is A, always use fresh water every day. B, keep the container that it's in clean. So if you can, give it a wash every day or every other day if you can't, uh, something along those lines. And then three, pay attention to the roots. These roots were probably not in water before. They were maybe in moss or in bark. Those environments are less wet. And so the roots are not adapted to being completely wet. 
these roots will potentially start getting a little mushier. They might start going a little bit of white mold or fungus. If you notice that's happening, you can cut off roots as they get uh, rotten or mushy. And you can also spray the roots down with 3% hydrogen peroxide if you notice that there's some white fungus growing on them. As well, you can extend the drying out period if you're noticing this is happening. So maybe you let it dry out for a day and then you soak for a day, let it dry out for a day. We'll start producing new roots that like wet environments. And that's the key. These new roots will enjoy being here. And that's what you want to see happening, especially if you plan on transitioning this to a semi-hydroponic or hydroponic setup. For my orchid, which was really, really in bad shape, I did this for, well, basically I'm still doing it, but it started to look better after say three weeks. So it did take a while. It might be really fast with the orchid though. It might be a couple days. Basically keep doing it until you notice that the leaves are firmer, more glossy, until you see that there's new roots coming out and potentially new growth on the orchid. If you're interested in switching your orchid to semi-hydroponic or hydroponic after it has revived and pumped up and looks better, then basically keep doing this method but extend the time very, very gradually that it spends in water. My orchid has been doing this on-off soaking method for 10 months now and I have it in water for about three days and then I take it out for a day or a night and then I have it back in water for three days. What happens and why the orchid needs this to be very gradual is that the roots that the orchid puts out are adapted to its environment. So at first the roots were adapted to bark, which is what it was in, and then gradually it started putting out new roots that enjoyed more human environments. Well, really, really wet environments actually. And so you need to give it a lot of time to put out these new roots that like this new environment. I basically have this in water up to here normally. You can also choose to just have the bottom portion of the roots in water and that works as well. After many months, I started adding a little bit of fertilizer, just very light orchid fertilizer. I hope this helps and I hope your orchids enjoy this little spa that you're creating for them every day. And if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to reach out, comment, DM us. We're happy to give suggestions and let us know how it goes for you. I hope your orchids start perking up fast and I hope that you enjoy how simple this and straightforward this method is, I certainly do. My orchid got to a place of dehydration, A, because my place is super dry, especially in the winters, and B, because I was scared to overwater it. This method has been really liberating for me and I'm just really freaking proud of myself that I can keep an orchid this happy. Thanks for watching and share any thoughts or questions you have in the comments.